was the police. <laughs> Uh, right, okay, uh, otherwise known as Sting. <laughs> but anyway, okay, uh, so we'll get a few f f through a few things this morning, easy for you to say. Uh, good, good to know, Jilly's just told me this, two East staff are now getting involved in uh, the, uh, a training to uh, give the vaccine. So that's now EasyJet, Virgin Atlantic and TUI. Uh, fair play to all of those uh, that, uh, ladies and gentlemen who are basically putting themselves in the front line. And yet... On the other side, it is amazing. Uh, we're hearing, uh, uh, um, uh, I, I heard this morning a, a tweet or a post or something from somebody in, uh, in Arizona, uh, in their town, nothing happened at all. Uh, all the bars and restaurants are open, everyone's just wandering around like everything's normal, uh, which is just great for that place, as long as no one else can come in and contaminate it, which it's amazing that you go from one you know, one extreme to the other, literally, uh, in the space of 5,000 miles. But anyway, uh, so we've got some um, uh, requests for stickers this morning, folks. Mr. J. Thompson, Mr. W. Thompson, uh, Miss Rosie Thompson and Miss Sarah Thompson. <laughs> Four envelopes there individually for uh, and all those guys from... Uh, oh, no, no, hold on a minute. That can't be right, can it? Wow. So we've got two, diff two different Thompsonses uh, sending uh, one, one set of them, Rosie and Sarah from Wolverhampton, and, uh, and W. Thompson and J. Thompson from Tipton in the West Midlands. It do we speak, uh, that's quite interesting, but that's wonderful. Uh, we've got one, and then, of course we send some uh, stickers off to you. Uh, what's this one here from Alison? Uh, wonderful job you and uh, Jilly are doing. I uh, love the shows. Uh, I put two stumped on envelopes in as, as one for my grandson who would like to get a letter in the post. Who, oh, he wants to, his son wants to get a letter in the post with, with Jerry's thing on it. That's, that's brilliant, mate. Keeping up the, uh, keep up the cracking show. Keep safe, Alison, and love and a purr to Charchi. So, yeah, got two going out to you, Alison. Um, uh, who's this? Uh, somebody asking for a, 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 I think it's Lee Wrench here, asking for a car sticker. I think he probably means uh, one of these stickers, but they're not car stickers, my friend. You can stick it on your car, but it's quite small. Um, and if you do stick it on your car, stick it in the middle of the windshield or windscreen, just because someone's going to nick it. You're going to get that if someone's trying to peel it off. Uh, quick, he's coming, he's coming! Um, but uh, yeah, Lee, uh, sticker on its way to you. Uh, Kisa and the Moo Moos, look. It's Keisa's dogs, the Moo Moos. Uh, and Keisa uh, from Red Hill in Surrey. Always thought Keisa was from, uh, from um, America for some reason. I don't know. But anyway, uh, there we go. So Keisa sent a picture of the Moo Moos in. Uh, but yeah, we've got some, uh, some stickers going out to you folks. Got to do all of those. Um, thank you to Zane Dunning, by the way, if he's watching this morning. To Zane, thanks so much for tr tuning in uh, or, 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 or having a chat with me earlier on because I need to get some information, more information on this Virgin edit in terms of crew names and stuff like that, which uh, Gareth and Zane and now Stu Rawlins uh, getting involved in it as well. Um, so that to do. So what have we got today? Let me just check. Oh, OK. Um, Oh, that's brilliant. Stu had a little bit of the lurgy, but he's all good now. So uh, that's, that's, that's good to hear. Um, so what else, else, what have we got today? We have got today um, the, uh, uh, the um, it was the clear up operate. Hello? Hello? Oh, hello, mate. You made it then. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's good, that's good, you made it. Okay. Okay, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Jilly, hold on a second. It's just easier, because I can't write with me. Let me pull up there. Oh. Okay, mate, go ahead, yeah. Mike, yeah. Yeah, Peter, yeah. Right, Willie. With an E or a Y? Yeah, I've got you, yeah. 
Harold. Okay. Carol. Okay, Carol. I've got that. Steve, yeah, that's easy, yeah. And S who? Sandy. Okay, mate, yeah, all right, fair enough. Well, well done. I've got all of those, yeah, yeah, okay. You, yeah, are you watching now, yeah? Okay, all right, I'll, I'll do it now. Okay, cheers, mate. See ya. <sighs> you there, Jilly? Okay. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, that was Harry, wasn't it? That was Harry from yesterday. Um, the herring, yeah. He wanted me to give a shout out to all his mates. Uh, Mike Mackerel, Peter Place, Willie Whiting, uh, Harold Haddock, Carol Codd, Steve Skate and Sandy Spratt. Uh, well done and congratulations to all you folks for making it to English waters. Uh, but keep yourself safe um, and uh, don't get caught. Um, because you don't want to end up in uh, 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 yesterday's news. Remember it used to be in the, in the newspaper, you used to get home and you'd, you'd peel off the newspaper and be off the skin of the, the, the cod on the newspaper. Because um, they always pack it so tight. If I go to the fish and chip shop, I don't, they, 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 like, they wrap it up like, squeeze it together. I'm like, whoa, 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 slow down. Nice and just, 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 I'm only taking it outside and I'm going to open it, you know, you don't need to squeeze it together so that when you get home all the chips are all congealed with the, the cod. It's like the lady in the post office, you don't need, don't need to fold the, uh, the, the receipt love because I'm, I'm taking it straight home and I've got to photograph it. There you go love. <laughs> Thanks then. <laughs> Um, and, and in fact, interestingly enough, I did have to nip down at home base this morning just to grab a couple of um, extra things for the model build, which we're going to be doing uh, when that arrives on Monday. Um, but what was interesting, and I've got to be honest with you, uh, I walked in there and uh, fella at the, uh, the, as soon as you walk through the gates there, the fella on the left hand side, he's like, uh, good morning, uh, do you mind using the, um, the, uh, the, the hand gel, the dispenser over there? I'm like, absolutely mate, gone straight over to it, wallop. It's all that sort of like, you know, stuff that takes a little bit of time to dry, but eventually it's done. So then you're protected when you go in through the store. And that's all good, you see. And I'm thinking, I'm walking around going, well done to the fella, well done to the fella. Got me stuff, gone back, gone outside. Um, and I've seen the, uh, as, I've, as I've walked past the... <laughs> It had to happen, didn't it? It had to happen. As I've walked out, I've, as I've checked out, the girls checked everything out, got it and put it all, like, walking past this office, you know, they always have an office there. And there's this girl in there. Ah! <laughs> oh, you did <laughs> You know, and, and I've looked, I've, as I've walked past, I've looked in the door and, uh, and she's sitting there with her mask off. Uh, the fella sort of like from here, to there from her sitting with a mask off and then a fella standing behind her with a mask off and I'm like wow that's amazing isn't it so so then I've I've gone I've gone outside and I've gone you know what I've got to do something about that <laughs> I've got to go and say something about that so I've gone back in again hello mate yeah me again oh can you use the dispenser yeah no problem la 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 good thing is it's got sliding doors so you don't have to touch the door so at the moment we're still doing elbows knees feet toes eyes, whatever you can, use your nose to open, whatever. Um, but anyway, so I've walked all the way around and I've come up to this young fellow and I said, uh, sorry mate, but who's your, uh, who's your... It's one of me scabs, isn't it? Is that one of me scabs? <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought I'd seen one of me scabs. Um, but, um, so, so, um, so I've gone up to the fellow, I said, you know, uh, uh, sanitizer and all that sort of thing. And uh, he's just a normal bloke standing there with his pinny on, you know, his, his apron. And uh, so I've walked around and I found this young lad and I've said, uh, sorry, mate, do you, uh, who's your manager on, on duty today? Because I was going to have a word about the people in the, in the office, you see. And uh, he said, yeah, that geezer over there. And I've gone, what, the fellow with the T-shirt? No, 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 the fellow doing standing with the, with the, you know, with the, I'm like, oh, OK, fair enough. So. So I've, I've walked up to, I've walked round and had to go round the one-way system, which is a bit, you know, I've walked all the way around the edge, you know, stay away from people. And I've walked up to him and I've stood away from him and I said, sorry, 
excuse me, mate, are you, uh, are you the manager? He says, yeah, I'm the manager. I said, oh, OK, so you're the manager on duty today. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, just, uh, I just wanted to say, uh, fantastic job you're doing here, mate, with the, uh, with the hand sanitizers and all that sort of thing. He's gone, oh, thanks very much. I said, is that, was, that, was that something you instigated or was it sort of like upper management? Said, he said, well, it's been talked about, but I've decided to do it myself. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's happening, folks. It's happening. Um, and, uh, and, and then I, and I said to him, I said to him, but mate, I've got to be honest with you, the, girl, the, the, the three people in the office there, I've just seen them, like three of them walk in there, take their masks off, sit down and all that sort of thing. You know, and, and, and he's like, yeah, no, no, I'll have a word with them. Because I, said, I said, look, you know, it's, everyone's got to be inconvenienced, don't they, unfortunately. People come in here, they have to wear their masks. So if you're going to have people in that enclosed environment where they're within sort of like a very short, small radius of each other, then you've got to make sure that they wear uh, um their masks when they go into that office, you know, uh, and, and it's just it's just fair, isn't it? So that minimises the amount of time they spend in that office. And if someone needs to go in there, do a little bit of admin, then one at a time, one at a time, and all that, you know, one at a time. You don't need three of them. All that, <laughs> yeah, oh blimey, really? Spitting everywhere and all that sort of thing. But anyway, uh, so so fair play. To home base uh, if they're doing it already this morning watching the news watching BBC breakfast old Charlie State and this fella Chris he's having a word with this fella because they they regularly have these um, uh, these discussions and this fella who normally comes on let's just have a look and see uh, his name is uh, Chris Smith and he's he's he's, he's the owner of Naked Science Limited. Uh, so he's done books on, on uh, uh, virile strains and all that, if that's the right word to use. But, you know, in terms of the, the, the surfaces, and I'm like, oh, hello, here we go. This is possibly, a, this is very possibly a discussion we're going to have on screens. Are they going to say anything about screens? So, uh, Charlie State. So, uh, Chris, what and there's someone else there's a, there's, a, there's a lady there and I'm sorry I forget her name but uh, she's obviously uh, she's the one with the fat flowers he's the one with all the computers behind him but um, she's she's obviously given some stuff she said something about outside handles on the trolleys it's not really that bad and it's like mm, okay I don't know because it doesn't survive so long outside but if it's a wet environment maybe it does la 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 just now I wouldn't say anything is safe don't say there's it's it's not that bad you know it is bad whatever surface it doesn't matter whatever surface you touch so um so 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 Charlie's talking to this Chris bloke, and he said, "So Charlie, uh, so so Chris, sorry, I got your name wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'm Chris, you're Charlie. Uh, other way round. Um, so he said, uh, he said, so Chris, what are uh, the uh, food stores like uh, the supermarkets doing uh, in terms of safety? You know, because when you you know we've 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 discussed this before, but uh, surfaces." surfaces i'm like here we go here we go they're gonna say something it's gonna say okay so so when you're walking around and chris is like right and this is the scientist folks chris is like well we've talked about this before when you walk around and you touch something a piece of cardboard you you pick something up and you put it down you don't like it you have a look at it and you put it down like that transmissions and all that sort of things you need to be careful and all that that's why people he didn't say but that's why people are asked to do their hands before they go in and i think they should do that at sainsbury's and tesco's it's another bleeding thing we've got to do in it sorry mate jim it's very easy though isn't it as soon as somebody walks through the door they're not all walking in tens and twenties they're walking one at a time so all they do is sorry sir do you mind using the hand sanitizer? Yes, sir. Sorry, can you hold on? Right, lovely. Right, next. Yeah, can you use the hand sanitizer? There you go, mate. And when it runs out, bosh, do another one. So that, that fella in uh, home base is leading the way. And home base are leading the way. So uh, uh, insist that they use sanitizer before they go in. Don't just say it's there if you want it. Insist. Uh, saving people's lives. So anyway, Chris is talking about, you know, um, uh, the, 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 the surfaces and all that. And then he starts getting on to steel. 
and things like that and like you know how it lives outside uh, inside longer therefore it, it, all people going inside are going are, are putting themselves at risk and all that and the surfaces keep mentioning the name surfaces and all that i'm like it's got to speak about the bleeding screens any it? it's got to or, or Ch charlie's gonna jump in and go chris chris can i stop you there one thing that's been discussed recently is screens because there's mate Go on to Google and, and type in uh, surface contamination of viruses on screens. My God, there is tons of it there, right, number one, but very little recently written about the COVID stuff. What's that all about? So anyway, um, so, so Chris is like, you know, this, this, this fella, this scientist, he's like talking about this, that and the other. And, and then Charlie's like, well, thanks very much then. Uh, well, we just have to all keep, try and keep safe and all that. I'm like, Mate, aren't you going to mention the screens? And it's like, right, okay, over to Sally for the weather. It's... I'm like, oh, God. So anyway, I've gone on LinkedIn and I found this Chris bloke, whether or not, uh, whether or not he's going to contact me. But if anybody out there knows anyone from management, upper management at Sainsbury's and all that, I just want to know if anyone has spoken to, because I did find the manager yesterday, didn't I? The woman, the, uh, another, I had another chat with, with one of the um, managers, a, another manager up at Sainsbury's, because obviously the manager, the chat that I, with the previous manager, because they have daily managers, didn't they? So this one, the other day that I spoke to with like three other people, they're in at one ear and out the other, in it. No change whatsoever on the, on the, on the tills. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and this, 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 this lady yesterday, I gave her my business card. I said, look, why don't, because she was like, you know, well, what we need, what you need to do is you need to email feedback, email feedback, email feedback. It's like, man, come on, don't be so lazy. Look, here's my business card. You go and do it. You phone them up. I've just given you a full description of everything that you need to know here. You, 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 you can go back to your managers now and, uh, and, and they'll probably say, oh, it's not that bloke with a silly hat, is it? Um, but, but, but even if it is, so what? You know, um, it's, it's that bloke coming back again because he's very, very insistent upon knowing what the, 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 these, these major stores are doing in terms of their surfaces and everywhere else. ATMs, you know. Uh, card machines, man. It's this lady yesterday, like, you know, blokes like, you know, okay, there you go. This is, she's gone, boop, 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 enter. It's like, oh. <laughs> I mean, really, you know, okay. I mean, that is really what it is, isn't it? That's what it is, isn't it? It's a big blob of, 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 of lurgy on your finger. Because you can't help it, you can't help it as an individual. But people, we're talking about intelligent people here. We're talking about people who've, you know, who are, who are, who are knowledgeable and all that. I just, I just, I just find it fascinating that millions of people are just like nonchalantly pressing screens. Knuckle, mate. Use your bleeding knuckle, and use your head and all. Use your head. You know, you wouldn't put your finger in a lump of poo, would you? Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm only doing it to educate people, or try to, anyway. So what have we got today? Um, we have got, um, we, we've got a quiz later on, folks. We're going to go live around about 7.30 tonight for a uh, quiz start at around about 8 p.m. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to play out a little bit. Um, this is the... Um, uh, 2XL uh, Aviation, who are an oil response team uh, up there at Robin Hood Airport, where the Vulcan is. Um, and uh, is it Robin Hood? Yes, it is Robin Hood. Um, Doncaster, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so these guys are based up there. They've also got a, a, a patrol aircraft that they use. But this is a 727. Uh, so so this, is, this is for the old school folk here. I think she's still got the old JTs uh, are, are, are booted at. Uh, 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 fitted on the back uh, three engines it's a trijet this aircraft um, and we basically it's, this is the raw cut as well there's no there's no edit to it it's just straight in there uh, had a few technical issues with the microphone um, we had a fella playing the radio on the, in the background which was a little bit off-putting as well uh, and of course you've got um, the general noises going on in the background I 
sort of like, you know, generators and, and you know, aircraft noises, which you would normally expect, but it obviously plays a little bit of a havoc with the, uh, and this is before we had the Lavellia mics, you see. Um, but even then that we might have had problems with it, but um, it's the sort of things that we have to go through. So this is 2XL oil response. Look them up, folks. They also work with, um, actually, hold on a second. Let me just, uh, it is in, just, just a second, just a second. Just, everything all right, Jilly? Okay, okay, I just wanna see, see if, uh, okay. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. I wonder if I can bring this up, hold on a minute. Oh, that was the, uh, is that, is that audio on that? Join us live on the Elite Channel this Friday as we get up close with this. <laughs> do you remember those I used to do? That was the preview to it. That was the, that was the pre uh, preview to the uh, all response. But that's their 727 in flight, folks. Um, uh, uh, we'll show that later. We'll show it later. Um, but, but basically, this is their 727. I'm sure I did a sort of like, you know, uh, piece in the cockpit. Okay, all right, okay. But we go inside the cockpit as well and um, have a look around the whole aircraft. And interestingly enough, listen out for the, uh, the rear steps that drop down. Uh, remember the old school jets, some of the, I think BAC 111s had them as well. But the rear entry steps that they had, as well as the front steps um, before, this is the days before uh, they had, you know, the, um, the passenger uh, uh, gantries, the walkways that we, we now uh, board the aircraft through. Um, people used to come via bus or walk straight out from the terminal, which you still do at Toulouse and places like that, uh, straight onto the tarmac and then uh, up, up the steps. But these are steps that are a part of the aircraft that basically drop down. And they are called, what was that? Oh, um, what was, um, Jilly, what was the, uh, hold on a minute, let me just have a look here. I'm, 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 I'm cause I've got to get this right. I've got to get it right, hold on a minute. Um, uh, this is, uh, Dan Cooper. There we go, Dan Cooper. Remember the fellow who supposedly jumped out of uh, a 727 with a bundle of money? Uh, and they call, DV Cooper, yeah. And they call it, they call this hatch, this, sorry, this set of steps, they call it the DV Cooper uh, 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 hatch or something like that. Um, no, you know what? I don't, Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's the DV Cooper set because this is supposedly where he uh, let the steps down and jumped out of the plane. Uh, and they never found him, of course. Um, but 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 uh, other than that, it's like just a general walk around and having a chat with those guys. And then we're going to break uh, and then we'll be back at about 7.30 this afternoon, folks. Uh, so, Jilly, when you're ready, I've got some envelopes to fill and uh, get ready for the quiz uh, tonight at 7.30, folks. Uh, it's a good one. It's pictures as well, uh, slightly different than what we did before in terms of uh, hopefully it run, it will, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say hopefully it will run smoother. Okay, we'll just go with it. Okay, GP, run VT. See you later, folks. I'm ready to go, GP. Well, there we go. Uh, sorry, folks. Uh, welcome, Big Jet TV. It is uh, it is a Wednesday, I believe. No, it's a Friday. Friday. Sorry, it is Black Friday as well. <laughs> there we go. Sorry about that. Well, sorry about the delay, guys. We had a delay just purely down to the microphone issues. Welcome to all you uh, elite members out there who are watching and tuning in from wherever you are in the world. We are uh, at an ex another exclusive location today, and uh, we are with the guys here at 2XL, and I have with me uh, flight engineer Steve Armson. How are you doing, Steve? Yes, good, thank you. Welcome to 2XL. Thank you very much indeed. Right, just tell me a little bit initially about what uh, the guys at 2XL are, are involved in. Well, in terms of the 727, we've got uh, two 727s, one based here currently on standby. Um, we work for uh, well, our main client, because of the oil spill response.
constant and it's our job at uh, short notice to get airborne and tackle any large oil spills that might be anywhere around the, around the world. So you say around the world, so you can literally position this aircraft anywhere. Okay, that's one of the beauties of the airplane. This is a, 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 a you know, relatively large jet. It can get to places very quickly around the globe and deal with, uh, a, a, with an oil spill at the earliest opportunity. So you have two 727s. A lot, a lot of people yep. don't realise you actually have Alpha and Bravo. Indeed, yeah. Uh, the registrations are GOSRA and GRSOB. Bravo's out in uh, among the stands at the moment. Alpha is in the hangar as our prime aircraft, ready to go uh, at very short notice. So you rotate them, do you, between, uh, we between do. servicing and maintenance? We do, yes. Um, so we've, we're contracted to provide an airplane all of the time, every day, every single day of the year. So when one airplane is in the hangar being um, up under maintenance, then we bring the other airplane up to readiness, uh, and so that gives us a con uh, continuous uh, standby cover uh, throughout, the year. throughout the year. So now, uh, a lot of you guys um, were, were told that we're going to be flying on the aircraft today, but obviously we're fog bound. Yes, yeah, yeah. Dog terrible uh, weather. Uh, and like you said, it's the first time it's yeah. happened in a long time. It is. So it's just sods law. It is Black Friday after all. Yeah. Um, but um, we will be at a later date be doing something, especially again for our elite members and for the guys at 2XL as well. Um, but what would the normal procedure be uh, if you were going out on one of these uh, training missions, so to speak? Okay, so the, the crew would meet about 90 minutes before the flight and we'd talk about what we were going to uh, be doing. In the UK, we'd be involved in the PA31 spotter airplane, so we'd be having face-to-face -face briefs with the PA31 crew. Uh, and you know, so that all our roles are, are clearly defined. Um, then we would uh, look at the weather, deal with the flight plan, the flight plan to get to where we're going. Uh, and then it's all about the briefing. We don't do this very often. We have to make sure that we, we brief, brief, and brief to make sure that we are as safe as we possibly can doing our unusual activities over the sea. Absolutely. And so you're, you have a specific, uh, I, 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 we were talking earlier, you call it the play area, yeah. uh, where, you, where, where you normally do all your uh, 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 yes. uh, uh, training sorties. Yes. Uh, that, it, locally for us here, that is off Flamborough Head. It's about 12 miles off Flamborough Head, maybe. And it's a relatively clear area of, of water, and we would go out there uh, and try, you know, avoid the avoid shipping where we where we can, and that's where we go and operate at the moment. Uh, it's, a, it's a relatively um, clear area of their space. And uh, for those guys watching today, in terms of visibility, uh, I know a lot of aircraft would normally fly in these conditions, as we understand. But you do everything on VFR, is it? Yeah, we have to have we have to see the horizon really when we're spraying at low level. So um, and, and the conditions really have to be favourable. If it's if it's really bad weather with large swells, we wouldn't be spraying anyway. So it has to be uh, nice conditions, uh, and we will go out and, and spray at that point. But a good a good indication is the horizon. We need we need a, a good clear horizon uh, for the pilot to get his uh, visual cues to make sure he's flying straight at level as well. Perfect. Right. What we're going to do is we're going to take a wander down the aircraft, get to the business end. Uh, I'm going to lift the camera off. Uh, you're quite aware of that uh, now, guys. And uh, hook the phone up so I can ask Steve some questions. Uh, normally, I'd be handing you the microphone, Steve, but we don't have a microphone. How about that? Uh, so here we go. Uh, just bear with us. Two seconds, folks. Auto cue on the phone. Okay. Right. Let's hope this book works. That's the beauty of live, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. 
Okay, uh, camera coming off. Okay, stand by folks. Sorry for the uh, roughness. Here we go. Okay, let's walk now. Steve, um, we have to speak up because uh, obviously we've got a, a, a quite a bit of background. Just yep. alongside me, that's fine. Okay. So um, she's an ex-freighter, I see. Yes, yeah, ex-FedEx. Uh, this is one of uh, several airplanes that was built for FedEx, the last ones to roll off the production line. And this was the very last airplane that uh, Boeing ever built. Built in 1984, I think it was something like the 19th of September. So um, it was built as a freighter for FedEx. FedEx were able to specify it as a... Uh, uh, with a with a, a, a better floor and it's got a better door. So other than uh, you know most of them you see are ex um, passenger airplanes that have been converted. This one came out of the production line as a, pass, as a as a cargo aircraft. And there's certain differences that you'll see as you walk around. So for example, it's only got one uh, door. Most most passenger converted airplanes have got several doors dotted around. Yeah, they the leave airplane. the doors in there they and just the uh, put the big cargo door in there. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But okay. So interesting. Point. So that's 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 quite. Um, noticeable then no mm -hmm. doors towards the back over the wing as there would normally be or, uh, or um, just the single one at the front it's just a single crew entrance door over the front there's there still exits over the over the wing oh is there uh, okay yeah, you can just you can oh just I see the smaller sort yeah. of uh, yeah yeah uh, yeah but I've other got than you. that the only end methods of entry and exit are the uh, front front uh, crew door and the rear air stairs which we'll look at in a little bit okay okay so is the uh, are, are both aircraft related uh, yeah, they're sisters. Um, Alpha was the very last airplane to be produced. Bravo was a little bit further up the production line, but they, they both went to FedEx, as, uh, so, so we've got a, a common fleet. So it was, it was very fortuitous that FedEx had just finished using the airplanes. Uh, they were parked up in the desert. We were able to uh, uh, purchase them from them and convert them back in the UK. Parked up in the desert? They were. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so how long had they been parked up in the oh, desert for? Do you know, I'm not 100% sure. They, they, they've been there a, a, a while, I, I can say. But so uh, we're going to discuss the reason why you guys at 2XL chose the 727. Mm -hmm. uh, give, us some of the, uh, give us some of the reasoning behind that then. There's several good reasons for the 727. The, the, one of them being that the airplane is uh, out of service on with most airlines. So there are a lot of them available. Uh, the spares are, are readily available, and uh, it's relatively cheap to buy in the first place. You know, we, we don't want to be spending uh, millions and millions of pounds on an airplane that's not going to be used uh, used a great deal. It's a very capable airplane. Um, it was re-engined in the uh, mid '90s. Uh, and, and it, it provides a lot more thrust than a standard 727 and that's really important for us at low level you know if we're operating at low level and we get a, a, a bird strike maybe we want the additional power to be able to drive out of that dangerous situation and these uh, these re-engined re uh, aircraft give us that extra power at, at low level and this is the JT8D engine these are these are all JT8Ds uh, the pod engines were re-engined with the 217 variants uh, compared to the dash 17s which are in the uh, the tail uh, and that was really due to space you know the, the airplane was designed around the JT-8-17 uh, and it, 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 it you couldn't physically fit a, a 217 in there uh, other other reasons we uh, that we use the aircraft is that it's tail mounted engines so if we were operate we were operating low level at 150 feet with a slight nose of attitude um, if we go through a flock of birds, the likelihood is that they'll hit the nose and the wing rather than get ingested into the engine. So it's all, it's all about the safety case for us, making sure that we're operating nice and safely down at 150 feet. Interesting. So, and also when we were, uh, when we were here last night, uh, just going through the initial briefing, mm -hmm. uh, we looked at the, uh, the other, one of the other um, uh, benefits of the 727 is, uh, is the bulkhead. Can we see that? Yes, of is course. that something we can see? Just uh, uh, to do that, let's to do that. I'll just have to open the um, the, the after air. Yes, yeah, yeah. And also, uh, quite an interesting. Um, so this is the famous rear stairs that. Uh, 
a certain uh, gentleman jumped out with his briefcase that they never found. Yes, that's right, Mr. Cooper. Uh, and we'll uh, have a little bit of information on that in a, in a, in a short while, folks. So, so let's see our light in here. Let's just see if we've got light. We've got light. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay, so talk us through it then, Steve. So one of the other good reasons that we, we bought this aeroplane is that it's got a flat bulkhead at the rear. Most aeroplanes have like a conical um, rear bulkhead. Uh, and if it was a conical rear bulkhead, it would provide us with difficulties getting out through the from the pressure bulkhead through and into the... the with a flat bulkhead, it makes it a lot easier to seal it. So the pipe work comes out uh, from the tanks in the cargo bowl, which we're going to see in a, in a short while, comes out through this door, down through this uh, compartment here and out, out to the boom. Now, um, coming through the door just means that it's really easy to seal uh, in, a, in a flat plane rather than a three-dimensional plane going through a conical uh, bowl. Uh, so yeah, so a lot a, less work basically to a lot greater ability to maintain pressurization. Uh, yes, there's yes. far less leaks coming through a flat door than a than a conical. They're trying to seal something that's uh, conical. Yeah. Whilst we're here, this is the this is where we fill the system. So when we come to replenish the system with the dispersant, it goes in through here. We take this panel off, and there's a quick fit um, uh, coupling in there. That we can, uh, we can so the connector would actually yes. the connector actually exactly. goes onto this yeah. okay exactly okay that. Exactly that. fantastic and that 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 comes up through here does it uh, we just bring it up the, the steps here yes and uh, straight into there and you can see some of the equipment lying around on the, on the floor out here that we use um, you can see the, the pump o over there with the with the coupling ready to go uh, next to our store of, uh, I've got gotcha. you I've got gotcha. you so that's yeah. the uh, that's that's what will um, pump the uh, fluids into the aircraft. Exactly, yeah, yeah. That, that, uh, at home base, that pumps the fluid into the into the airplane when we're uh, ready to fit with the uh, fluid and more fluid. Uh, fluid. Because that's oh, our, okay. that's our uh, store of dispersant, that big white tank there, is our store of dispersant for the um, UK area. So that whole tank will take how much? Well, fluid. there's enough in there to fill our system. Our system holds about 15,000 litres. So there's enough in there for 15,000, one full, one, one full fill and a little bit, a little bit spare uh, left over. OK, and uh, just, um, just for the uh, something you told me last night, which mm -hmm. was very interesting about the, uh, the step system that after oh, yes. the gent uh, oh, yeah. jumped, they actually made a modification to the aircraft. That's right, yeah. Well, DB Cooper was the chap that held the aeroplane um, hostage. He escaped through the, car, the, the aft air stairs. So what they did is they built this uh, vane, like a weather vane, and it went, if I point to it here, it just went on here uh, against a big spring. And when, when there was no airflow against the weather vane, the spring would return it to a, a lateral position and you could open the door. As soon as you've got a bit of airflow over it, the, the, the uh, fin would, would make the vane into a longitudinal position and that would, that would throw a little lug out over the door and it would prevent the door from opening. Wow, okay. Yeah. And they called that the what, sorry? The Cooper vane. The Cooper vane. Yeah, you'll see there it, you go, see folks. This because it was a freighter, so it never had it. Never it. needed it. Never needed it. No. So this this does not have the Cooper vane in it, it folks. It does not. No, one of only two. How about that? <laughs> wow. Right. Okay. So we are obviously at the business end. Close Shall we? Uh, we're just going to put this uh, this access step system back up, folks. Just uh, look how easy this is to go up. Fantastic. Okay, so now one of the whole main reasons uh, we're here and this 727 is very unique is obviously this uh, the boom yes, that indeed, yeah. uh, actually disperses the, the liquid. Sure. So run us through it then, Steve. Okay, so we have a, a boom either side of the airplane with a centre section. It's got 15 nozzles either side, so 30 nozzles in total. And uh, the fluid comes out from the uh, area that we just looked at uh, inside the airplane into this centre section 
and then out through the boom uh, and out through the uh, nozzles. The nozzles are very quite standard nozzles and they just um, make like uh, small particles of water uh, land on the uh, on the um, uh, the spill itself, or in the case of the real spill, it be dispersing. So it almost um, creates a mist. It does. It's like it's like a mist uh, because, and it's it's quite scientific how it works. So you have to get the right amount of fluid on the on on a spill. If you put too much on, it'll just sink through, and it doesn't mix with the oil and doesn't have the the correct effect. If you put too little on, it'll just roll off the off the top, and again, doesn't have the right effect. So it has to, we have to put out the right amount of fluid onto the on, onto the spill, and then the, 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 the mixing will take place, and then all these microorganisms that are in the water, can then you have a feast on the oil and clear the oil off. Yes. Okay. Well, this is the, the area. I can cut the piece. Just going to cut that. Uh, cut that. There we go. So um, obviously, when you bought the aircraft, when you had the aircraft delivered, the f one yes. of the first things you had to do was actually design and develop this boom. Yes. So indeed. was it designed uh, by yourselves, or exactly? Yeah, exactly that. It was. This whole system has been designed, manufactured, and installed by 2XL in the UK. And it, it's a it's a fact that the cus that the uh, the company is ju justifiably proud of. You know, we've created the only certified. Um, aerial dispersant system in the world, uh, jet-based. Uh, this is unique. Totally bespoke. Yeah, absolutely. All done by this company in the UK. And the, like I say, the company are justifiably proud of its achievements in doing so. So what about the actual design uh, and development stage? Because uh, the only way to test it is literally bolt it to the aircraft. Did you have exactly. any issues at the, at the, at the onset? Yeah, well, you know, we, we got to the point where we were ready to test the airplane. And one of the problems that we had was uh, a little bit of fluctuation with the boom. I see. And we were able to counteract that in in house again uh, by designing and installing these little fillets on the back here. And you know, it, it took a week to design to, to recognise what the problem was, design and install these booms and we were, uh, these fillets, and we were back out testing them within seven days. And it just goes to show you the. How the, the company all worked together uh, to produce this. Aeroplane. So originally it was a cylindrical shape, yeah, but, but now it's there. turned into sort of like a almost like a wing uh, shape. Yeah, um, the, the, the cylinder created a, a, uh, an effect called the Carmen Street Vortex, and it, it's um, similar to a car aerial going through uh, the air or a, or a, a big chimney. Uh, they have to take measures to stop the chimney from vibrating. It's exactly the same thing with this. We have to take measures to stop it by vibrating. And those little fillets at the back just smooth the airflow out, stop these uh, vortex uh, um, being produced, and stop the vibration uh, being, being affected on the, on the boom itself. Interesting. Very interesting. Right, let's just have a little walk out. Sorry, you it's were going to say. Yeah, just worthwhile noting that yes. the boom is installed on this aeroplane. It takes us about two hours to take the boom off and then it can go in the cargo hold and then we're, we can fly away with the, uh, with the boom off. We don't have any speed restrictions and then we can, we can get to our, uh, our destinations. I see. Quicker. So generally you would fly if you had a project out or, or, a, or, a, or a job out um, in South America, for example, or, or yep. Africa or wherever, uh, you would normally take the boom off, store it in the, in the belly and, then, uh, and yes. then install it when you get there. Almost certainly, yeah. It would only be really if there was a spill very locally that we would, uh, we, we would depart with the boom on. Okay, so yeah. it's uh, so it's removable at uh, relatively it quick. Is. Yes, wow. and and re uh, removable and in and we can install it. The, the crew can do that. So the three members of the crew, uh, plus anybody else that's uh, around helping, can all install that uh, within. Let's well, say two hours with all the equipment that we carry in the uh, in, in the cargo hold. And also, um, you you the the. the the crew and the aircraft are very self-reliant if mm. they go to a, go, go to a spill, uh, yes, an indeed. airfield that sort of like um, uh, doesn't have the amenities that you would, you would want. Uh, you would, you'll only need ground power there really and a set of steps or something like that. Ground power, a set of steps, obviously because you saw where the pipe came through the door, we yes. can no longer open that door. So we need a set of steps to get on and off, uh, ground power unit 
and that's about it really we we are very self reliant you know the airplane has an apu obviously not in the tail because there's a there's an engine there these days uh, it's in the it's in the wing so we can provide pneumatic power and electrical power all from the apu very self sufficient down route all the equipment that we've got in the in the um, belly holds are, is we can get that out straight away and uh, use that to fill the airplane so as, as long as we get the dispersant to site, we can fill up and be gone. Like I say, in, in about half an hour as a, as a turnaround, but uh, let's say two hours uh, with a with a take putting the boom on. So your crews are uh, are relatively local. Are they on standby or? Yes. Okay. We have a crew on permanent standby uh, each day of the year through the daylight hours mainly, uh, and we can respond within four hours to a, to a spill. So if we get a, if we get a call from our customer saying. There's a, a spill off the uh, off Lambra Head, for example. Within four hours, we can be airborne. Uh, hopefully, before that, actually. But uh, we're contracted to be airborne within four hours and being in the discipline. Now, um, we've seen the aircraft displayed yes. uh, with your with your uh, display team as well. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, I guess they they could be put down as a as a, as a training mission or yeah, we because it is low level, isn't it? Yeah. It is, we, we, we take every opportunity to uh, practice with the crews. So, you know, uh, for the, even when we were displaying at, at Farnborough, at Scampton, uh, and Dux, um, Cosford, we were still spraying water, so we were still having the opportunity to exercise the crews. Uh, and that's what it's all about, because we don't fly uh, that much on, it, uh, on real spills. Uh, we have to make every opportunity to practice using the, the crews on the which, whichever whichever exercise it is, whether it's off the coast or whether it's uh, displayed. And it's also good to get the message out to people at air shows about what we do. And uh, there's it's a lot of mystery uh, and uh, you, you know sort of uh, stories about what we do. But it's actually nice to be able to go out and tell the stories, the real, uh, the truth about what we do in those uh, in those environments. So. Fantastic. So. Uh a bit of fun at the air displays, but also exactly. educating the public as yes. well at the same time. Yeah, yeah 100%. So uh, we're going to probably have uh, quite a few um, uh, aviation fans who, uh, who are 727 yes. uh, 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 knowledge nuts. Yes. And they will notice that there's uh, no reversers on the, uh, on the third engine. Yeah, number two engine doesn't have a reverser. Oh, it's um, the number two, is yes, it? it? Okay, it, my just, apologies. Just as a standard one, one, two, three. I see. The centre engine is number two engine. It doesn't have a reverser because it doesn't need it. The, the the two engines on the pod are so powerful that they that they, they just take care of the reverse anyway so there's, there's no real reason to have the, the third reverser and I believe the guys are about to test the yes. uh, the buckets uh, yeah. the bucket reverses something that obviously uh, you guys are, re uh, are used to seeing is the slider reverse system um, on modern day aircraft modern engines but we're gonna see the, uh, the buckets Fantastic, look at that. So yeah, when we uh, land, we can use the reversers to slow us down. We, we, we rely on the brakes. The reversers are additional uh, deceleration methods for us. Is very, it? Very effective, yeah. yeah they... So you will use those in flight? Oh, no, no, sorry, oh, only sorry. on the ground. Oh, only okay, ground. Yeah, I yeah. was going to say. So when we land... Concord we... <laughs> used to, but uh, I was going to say. When we land, we use the brakes, uh, and the, the uh, lift dump appears on the wing, and it's, uh, we were able to slow the aeroplane down using the brakes. We also use the uh, thrusters reversers as an additional means of uh, stopping uh, the aircraft. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. They're, they're very effective. We go up to go around speed on the engine uh, to, with, with reverse thrust. It's really? Very, we can do, we don't, we don't, because it's quite noisy and we like to be uh, considerate to our, uh, our neighbours as much as possible. So they're very effective then? They are effective. Highly effective. They are effective. Um, we sort of stow them at about 70 knots. Because uh, to, to the problem is, of course, if we've got them in reverse, uh, we're picking up dirt off the, off the of floor course. and we're throwing it forward. Yeah, ingesting intake, it potentially. So yeah, we, yeah. Uh, we, we uh, retract them. Do you want to get them retracted? Yes, please. Okay, then can you retract them then? Well, that's quick. That's uh, okay. That's an effective uh, hydraulic system. <laughs> okay, guys, so we are now going to go on board the aircraft. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
course, uh, being a tea tail yeah. uh, in terms of maintenance and getting up there, um, that's something that's done at one of your other. Uh, Yes, Lasham. Yeah, yes, uh, Lasham uh, down in Berkshire. There, we um, we've got an engineering base down there uh, that our sister company, Two XL en Engineering, own, and they do quite a lot of work with 727s, 737s, 757s um, with, with with maintenance, and we our airplane goes down there for its uh, for its maintenance at the moment. So uh, yeah, and any any maintenance on the tail. We'll definitely be done down there. Uh, quite close to that ceiling. It is very close, yeah. There's, um, <laughs> there's about uh, 10 inches uh, between the top of the tail and the, the, the underside of the, uh, the, the, the hangar itself. Yeah. Wow, interesting. So we are now, this is going to be, this is going to be really interesting, guys, because when, um, when, uh, when I was here last night, uh, just having a little recce, um, it wasn't apparent to me exactly what the layout was internally with the tanks, yeah. the actual uh, fluid or dispersant as it's called. Let's just uh, make sure that we get a good shot of that oil spill response. So basically oil spill response have a, have a they're a group of companies. It's, oil spill response is a, a not-for-profit not company that, is, that has uh, all the major oil companies on its, on its board. And they all all pay into oil spill response, um, uh, uh, and they they're almost buying like a level of insurance in, in effect. So uh, oil spill have like uh, a, a, a many different tiers of response that they can um, provide for their for their clients. You know, the very basic uh, um, amount would be going out on the shoreline, maybe, and you know, uh, direct uh, recovery of, of oil. Uh, right up to the top layer, which is uh, aviation uh, facilities uh, uh, and uh, assets, rather, and, and, and this would be one of their aviation assets that they could provide. You know, it's a, obviously a big red and white aeroplane. The, the clients aren't going to get away with sneaking this aeroplane around the world. You know, if we're spraying, we're spraying on a big oil uh, slick. So it's, you know, the, the client has to work that into whether they, you know, whether they need to do it or yes. not. Yes. And they will, they will do as much as the lower levels as need to be. But they've got that top level of aviation response if, if they need it. And you also mentioned uh, as well that uh, dependent upon the, the severity of the spill, yes. uh, sometimes you'll actually leave it up to the natural environment to yeah. disperse it with big waves if it's a long way out for example depending on where it is and, and the size of the spill if it's a small spill way off of uh, offshore it may not be practical to do it with a 727 it, it might be that the oil will uh, will disperse itself you just remember oil's been leaking into the sea as long as there's been oil underneath the sea you know it's not just because people are drilling it, this is a natural process as well so uh, the, the main thing that we don't want to happen is for the uh, oil to settle on the on the on the seabed or get onto the um, seashore yes uh, so yes. we don't need it we, you know if it's getting close to the shoreline we'll definitely go out and, um, and, and clear it up okay good stuff right let's uh, let's head on in okay so again uh, this is a very interesting uh, layout that you see here folks I'll let you go up Steve and I'll go up and join him in a second so we're going to be going on board the flight deck in a second folks the flight deck is live Okay, first of all, there we are, there's the tanks. Okay, first off, Steve, just okay. run us through this, uh, th through the panel here, or shall we start, yeah, shall we no, start at the back there, just, uh, or, sorry, the apologies. <laughs> that's okay, all right, yeah, so this is the uh, fill panel, and we use this, not surprisingly, to fill the system, and uh, it's quite straightforward. We use the, the different fill valves here to um, pump fluid into the uh, tanks uh, of the, uh, on the aeroplane. So tanks one through seven 
are all uh, um, controlled independently by these different different switches. This is again designed, in manufactured, installed uh, by 2XL. In, in, in so that area. whole unit there is completely bespoke. It is manufactured, yeah. designed indeed, indeed, uh, by yeah. you guys. Yeah, and that I believe is also um, reflected on the. Uh, on the flight, flight engineers, engineers panel. panel as well. Yeah, the the tanks are reflected on the on the flight engineers panel. He's got separate valves to use to to open it. We use um, fill valves on here and supply valves uh, on the flight engineers panel. I see, um, and uh, and I understand that the uh, in terms of the um, uh, CG. Um, yes. Uh, it's quite important when you're emptying the tanks that they're emptied in a, in a, in a certain way. Indeed, yeah, yeah. Uh, because it's a tail heavy aeroplane anyway, um, what we tend to do is, uh, and the CFG is, is around this sort of area here, uh, over the wing, what we do is we use the tanks one through four first, then we, and that sends the CFG aft, then we use tank seven, which brings it forward a, a, a little bit, and then tanks five and six at, at, the, very, at the very end. So there's, a, there's a, a particular way that we use the, uh, the fluid without just uh, yes. them all up and use it. And of course, uh, it starts, um, you can see the, the, the capacity from 20 up through to 100%. Yeah, so well. each tank holds 2,000 litres, and uh, we've got 20% would be 400 litres, and then all the way up to 100% of, of 2,000 litres. And that's how we decide how much we're, we've got in the tank now, which we're going to uh, dispatch with. And this is the panel that's used when you're filling the tank? This is the fill panel, yes, yeah. Okay. The, 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 tank, the, the panels in the fly deck are all used for airborne. Okay, let's uh, swing it round okay. and go on board. So you'll see here, folks, this is uh, quite unique. Again, something that was uh, designed and built by the guys at 2XL. Indeed, yeah. Every, every single bit designed and built by the uh, by 2XL. We have contractors helping build things like the tanks, for example, but it's all, all done in, in the UK. It's important to note that these tanks are all double skinned. So if the fluid was to leak, it would only leak into the outer shell. It wouldn't leak into onto the, uh, the cargo compartments at all. So it's for as, as operators, it's completely dry for us. You know the old Hercules that I used to operate in, there was fluid sloshing around occasionally. You know, but this is completely sealed, completely dry for the for the crew. And uh, that, that goes that goes true. That holds true for everything, including the um, the manifold. This is a manifold here that goes. Uh, connects all the tanks together. Even the vent manifold is all um, uh, piping within a pipe, so it's all secondary contained. It's a very, called. very sturdy structure. Uh, yes, uh, indeed, is, yeah. it, was that something that was uh, on the initial designs when you first designed it? No, initially it was um, the airplane would stay with the roller conveyor on, and the, all the tanks were palletized. Uh, so. Well, we had to change that design. The authority made us um, change it to uh, a system that was bolted to the floor. And you can see that everything now is all bolted to the seat traps. Uh, this this um, uh, device here, and each tank is each uh, is, is bolted down to the main frame of the airplane, in effect. Uh, and and they're, they're, they're tested to 9G. So in the event of a 9G incident, that the crew would possibly survive, uh, the tank should stay where they are in the, in the airplane and not come forward and, uh, and, and uh, interrupt with the flight deck. Hardly sees, seems to be uh, uh, worthy, but that, that, that catch net is a 9G catch net, I believe. It is a 9G uh, net. That was used by FedEx when they had it, when he had it as a freighter. We have got it on board as an additional safety measure. It's, uh, but it, it really is quite redundant these days because Everything down here is, is stressed to 9G on the floor anyway. So, so tell us what's in here then, Steve. So this is a, a compressed air receiver. It's just like a big air tank. Um, and it's, it's uh, wound in uh, Kevlar and sits in a Kevlar box. So the air that's in there is used to uh, motor all the uh, valves that we've talked about earlier on, the fill valves and things like that. And even the when we're adjusting the rate of spray, it's all done by uh, an air-operated valve. It's actuated electri um, sorry, instigated electrically on the flight deck, but the valve itself moves under pneumatic power. Uh, and, that, and that was, um, we, we were initially going to have a, a, a compressor on board, but that, that fell in the, um, that 
give us additional challenges that we, we didn't want, we couldn't overcome. I see. So the idea is that we've got a uh, an air tank here, and it will last long enough for us to do the spray mission. Uh, and after each spray flight, we'll come back, we'll replenish the system with uh, dispersant, and we'll fill the car up with the air, compressed air. Uh, to so this is this this is this is also changed every time you refill exactly uh, yeah. that replenish the tanks. Yeah. So we'll, we uh, typically on a uh, on a large spill, we'd go out and we'd do our first um, spray. Then we'd land back at the uh, forward operating base. We would refill or replenish the, uh, the, the the dispersant, and at the same time we would replenish the air. All in all, it takes about 30 minutes. We could be looking at being here for 30 to 45 minutes after uh, getting on, on the shops. So, and then back out onto, onto site, providing us the, the spray to deal with the spill. Fantastic. Okay, well, I think that explains everything in the back. Uh, let's move into the front. I believe we have our crew waiting for us now. Um, this is uh, kind of going back in time, isn't it? Because uh, <laughs> yes. we've got, we got three crew members on board. Uh, uh, one has just had to nip out, but what we've okay. got is uh, a senior first officer and a flight engineer on board. Okay. And they'll be able to answer all your, all your questions. Fantastic. So we don't have a skipper. No, you've uh, just had to nip off. You'll be back very, very shortly. Okay. So, gents, here we are. Um, takes me back to the old school days uh, when my dad used to fly the DC-8s and uh, flight engineers panel something's very unique of course to the 727 and other aircraft of that age so yeah. how are we doing gents uh, what's yeah, what's your name sir I'm I'm Doug and this oh, sorry is... sorry say that again I'm Doug and this is Matt hi I'm Matt how you doing Matt good thanks yeah so first officer yeah first officer on this okay and uh, you guys would work very close together uh, when the aircraft is on a sortie Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, what's the um, what's what's your individual roles, so to speak? Oh, well, the roles vary really, and we alternate between pilot flying and pilot monitoring uh, in the front, uh, and with uh, expert advice and assistance from a flight engineer uh, sat behind us. Uh, so, that flight engineer we find is is uh, invaluable. Uh, don't tell them that, by the way. <laughs> um, so, so, what's uh, what what are you calling out then uh, during the flight, then, sir? Which, oh, sorry, yeah, well, what we basically do as a flight engineer is obviously when we're spraying, uh, we're monitoring the systems. As you can see, if I'll give you a bit of a test here, look, these are all the tanks and the levels. Yes. So we'll be monitoring the flow, how much is going out, how much we require to go out, and how much we've got remaining. I see. Plus, obviously, all the other aircraft systems on board and everything. So you've got quite a lot of stuff to do during the flight then? Yeah, it's pretty intensive. Quite a lot of yeah. monitoring to especially, go on then? Yeah, especially on the uh, spraying and everything. Yes. Okay. And of course, um, the difference in, in what you're doing here with a, with a standard flight is obviously you're flying at low level as well and uh, getting down to that low level as well. So there's quite a lot of... Uh, it's quite, quite intense, I would imagine, is it? Yes, it is. It's, it's quite intensive. I mean, we, we drop down to 150 feet and start to spray. So it's quite intensive. Yeah. And FO, tell us what your uh, what your role is here, sir. Yeah, so um, when when we're uh, transiting to to scene, then uh, either myself or, or the captain will be flying flying the aircraft, depending on where we're going, and how far that is. Uh, but when we're spraying, uh, then the captain takes over controls pilot flying. Okay, so the pilot flies the aircraft, uh, keeps us at 150 feet, keeps us on on track. Um, You'll see it's a, you know, a classic aircraft, so uh, it hasn't got an overly complicated autopilot. Um, uh, and when we're spraying at low level, it's all manual flights. We, we do an awful lot of manual flying, which is unusual for this sort of class of aircraft. So left-hand seat's flying, uh, and as the FO, I'm responsible for thrust, so I keep us at the right speed. Um, we tend to keep uh, engines one and three up at a, at a static power level, so the thrust is always available from those two, so it takes quite a long time for them to spool up. Uh, and then the control of the centerline air, um, engine, engine number two, uh, the speed. That's a smaller engine, so it's got instantaneous thrust. Um, it's remarkably stable, uh, and all phases are flying. It's an absolute dream to fly this aircraft. Loads of pitch authority, loads of roll authority, um, and she, she really flies really nicely at low level. Uh, great, great aeroplane to fly. Um, lots and lots of fun. So you have to keep her relatively trimmed on the on the actual run, so to speak, when you're down at that 100. Yeah. When you're coming down through to that 
uh, from sort of like high level what, what what level would you be going in at initially you'll, you'll come out of the airfield climb to a certain altitude and then descend yeah, or? it depends how far we're going so so this system uh, the Tursa system fitted to those aircraft is it's unique in that we can pressurize the aircraft and go long distances at high altitude um, so if needs be you know if we're going to the north of Scotland uh, we'll climb up to 25,000 feet maybe uh, transit to scene um, and then drop to low level and our initial level is a thousand feet uh, and we'll RV at a thousand feet with any other support aircraft or vessels um, have a look at the area and, and the scene at a thousand feet and then configure the aircraft so we'll be slowing down putting flaps 15 out okay configuring uh, the Tursa system uh, and getting ready to go into the spray from there on uh, captain will take control of the aircraft by flying I'll take control of the thrust um, and then we'll descend to low level. Um, everything's trimmed out, everything is, is, is ready to go. Stable, very and stable. stable, yeah. Um, as we're dropping to low level, uh, Doug the flight engineer is looking over and monitoring quite, quite closely what's going on. Uh, and one of Doug's primary roles is to keep an eye on the altitude. So we're losing the radar altimeter to get the 150 feet, uh, looking at the pressure altimeter as well to get a sensible reading where that is, um, and then maintaining that stable. It's really important for us to be on altitude, on speed, uh, uh, to allow us to dose uh, the dispersant overall at a right dosage rate, which is vitally important. Um, so you have a uh, you have a spotter aircraft as well that, that we flies do. with you on these sorties, or yeah. uh, is that is that standard procedure on every sortie? Um, we can spray independently. Uh, we would prefer to have the spotter with us, um, and uh, we provide that spotter aircraft for all spill response. Uh, in fact, you can probably see her over my right shoulder. Yes, uh, in the hangar. So she has camera in the nose. She's got uh, infrared, and she's able to uh, yeah. pick out the 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 the. the, the specific point that you need to spray at. Absolutely, yeah, she's quite unique actually in that she's got a, a, a brand new type of sensor on the nose uh, with uh, high definition video, uh, a radiometric infrared sensor and an ultraviolet sensor. Um, and uh, that allows us really to pick out the detail in oil and differentiate the thickness in those, those oils. Um, got a great mission management system on board that allows the guys to uh, map the oil uh, and accurately predict how much oil has been spread in, what, in which areas. Um, so they will go in first. That's the idea, they will yeah. go in first and 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 give you all the, and, and then uh, uh, radio back all the information and Absolutely. the height that you need to be at and so on and so forth. Yeah, so, so radios, uh, satellite, and data links are fitted to the aircraft uh, to allow real time analysis of what's going on offshore. Uh, sent back to Orspil Responses headquarters uh, and then informed to us as well. Uh, so great communication with these guys. We fly at least three times a month with them. Uh, in, in combined sorties uh, and practice our, our skills. Must be great to fly. Oh yeah, great brilliant. fun to fly. I mean, a great day out, isn't it, for you guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's absolutely. Good fun. Yep. Yeah, can't beat it. Mate. Fly by the seat of your pants, sort of stuff, really, rather than absolutely. sort of like all the modern day yeah. jets that are just like you know take yeah. off and off you go because right. uh, there's there's no glass it's noticeable there's well there's a, there's just one piece of glass on the front here Absolutely. Uh, that's the only modern uh, piece of equipment you've got on here other than that yeah it's a uh, pretty standard equipment which is to yeah. be per perfectly honest more preferable to me but there you go well, we, love it. You know, <laughs> that's right. uh, we fitted these, these navigation devices uh, when we bought the airplanes um, you know so GPS based FMS is um, uh, and Steve's probably explained we're about to upgrade the system uh, to future proof it for the next 10 years. Um, so, yeah, it's a great aircraft to fly. Uh, and, and there's loads of information available to you at a glance, you know. Um. Yes, fantastic. Yeah, it's fantastic. Brilliant. Great fun. Great. So anytime you get a call, it's like, yep, yeah, see you there in five minutes. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> really Are you guys relatively local so that you can be on, uh, be in? I am, yeah. I'm just down the road. Uh, some of the guys are, are spread out a little bit more. Uh, but then, yeah, we provide crew accommodation uh, at the airport to uh, to meet our deadlines. Fantastic. Gents, thank you so much. Oh, it's been been very enlightening. Well, absolutely. Uh, we'll no doubt catch up with the skipper at some point later. Yeah. And uh, really appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you go. How about that? What a great, uh, a great insight there. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Well, folks, what a shame. It's, uh, it's a foggy day up here in Doncaster. As you can see, it's cleared up a little bit. Uh, let's just have a little look at the um, at the Navajo. 
So this is the spotter aircraft, Steve. Yes, that's right, yeah. Okay, just uh, just run us through this then. So the um, the turret that Matt was talking about uh, is positioned on the nose here. Sorry, run that again. Sorry, the uh, the turret that Matt, Matt was describing with all those sensors on is, uh, is, is in the nose here and um, just in front of the nose wheel. And that provides a, a feedback into the, uh, the, the compartment, the passenger compartment in there, where one of our systems operators sits in there and all the information is fed into his computer, into his laptop. So if you were to look inside, it just looks like a, a standard BA31. He brings his laptop in, plugs into the, uh, uh, the, 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 the turret, and then can use all those different uh, sensors to quantify the oil and um, and then send back the information to oil spill response using SATCOM or radio. And you can see it's been extensively modified uh, with different aerials on, on top of the airplane. Yes, yes. Uh, for, for that purpose. So that one needs maintaining as well, this one? Yeah, As this well one. as all the other aircraft that you have in the fleet? Yeah, this one's maintained. This one's maintained here. We've got a part 145 uh, at the back of the hangar there, and they would uh, maintain the airplane uh, just here. In fact, it's just come off of a, a check, and, uh, so it's, uh, and it's, 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 now, it's now ready to go. It's got another 50 hours before another, another check. The beauty of using the BA-31 uh, in this role is that, I don't know if you can see the, the outside, we have several of them anyway. There's, I think it's 11 BA-31s in our fleet. So if this one is, uh, we always have a standby in case this one uh, uh, needs, needs maintenance or, yes. or is unserviceable in any way. Yes. Uh, and we can call on our colleagues and the rest of the fleet uh, to provide the, uh, the, the standby cover. So I'm guessing that the, uh, this role of this aircraft and the pilots that fly this aircraft is very significant as well. It's, yeah, it's no, well, it definitely. And it, it's, uh, it's challenging for the pilots, you know, because we're asking guys to go out um, VFR maybe, you know, and fly to a place in the middle of the uh, middle of the sea and uh, fly and around in circles. Yeah. They've got to find They've got it to, to find start it. with. Fly around in circles, fly a pattern to be able to, to see it. So it's, it's quite technical for them as well. You yes, know? yes. Uh, so it takes a certain type of pilot to be able to do that. Not everybody can do it, you know. And um, you know, our, our guys are, are, are very good. They're very, uh, very. St again, it's about providing a stable platform, and they do just that. And the SO, the system operators, use the camera to in. in close teamwork with the pilots to find the oil and report. So the operators will be in the back of the yes. aircraft, they yeah. have all their equipment in the back of the aircraft? Yeah, yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. So normally just dispatch with a pilot and the system operator. Sometimes the client will send uh, somebody to come along as well and they'll they'll sit in to, to assist and observe mainly. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's just the, the two-man crew really. Just doing some... Uh, Looks like they're doing some slat tests there. Yeah, the slats are going out, so he's extended to flaps five now. And now he's uh, gone, gone now, sorry, now he's gone to flaps five. And you'll see that all the slats and uh, crew the flaps are extended. And, um, Let's just have a wander down here, because I'm getting a bounce off this wing. Yeah, uh, you can see a better view off. Yeah, on the other side. side. So he's just checking that. Yeah, Paul So while we're here, as soon as we're not flying, slats, we're just slats. getting something done. <laughs> So these are very effective, and we've just come back from the simulator actually uh, doing trials with the, um, or drills for some of the slats not extending or some of them remaining extended. And so it's quite um, interesting to see how that affects your performance uh, and how that affects your, uh, the, the rolling of the aeroplane. So you have, to, uh, you have to perform uh, simulator tests based on yeah. certain scenarios. Exactly, and we, we try and uh, build in a scenario. Um, <laughs> we try and build in a scenario in the simulator that is valid for what we're doing. So, for example, on this last simulator session, we uh, simulated going out to a spill a, a long way away from the uh, forward operating base and then having a, an issue that increased our drag. So that would mean that we were having um, additional fuel flow, you know, and getting on, on getting down to bare minimum fuel, uh, and just practicing things like that, you know. So it was um, uh, a very enjoyable uh, sim session. Flaps at full. Flaps full, yeah. And it's interesting that 
when they changed the engines, they restricted the uh, the flaps. If you just come back, you can see a little bit the uh, the, the spoilers of XC. Oh, I see. Flaps. Yeah, yeah. Um, so normal 727s have uh, 40 degrees of flap, uh, but when they re-engined it, they they didn't need the 40 uh, degrees of flap. So our maximum is 30. I see. So is that locked 30, out at 30, or, it is, it's or, or can it go through to 40? Or? No, you know it's it it's locked out. Through. It's locked, and you'll see on the flight deck that there's a uh, a mechanical restriction to stop. I see, you really, <laughs> literally, and also, um, yeah, and you, you'll see on the tracks that they, where, where it stops. So yes, yeah, unless you take out that thing and move it even further. Then yes, they yes. Can't go. But you see that that is that is full flat, and uh, we've got the. Just, just have a little uh, look to see if we can. Uh, I think we just get a little shot there. There we go. The spoilers are up. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's ground spoilers. So oh, it's ground spoilers, all yeah. All of the spoilers have been extended. And um, this is a, so this is a ground situation only. So the inboard spoilers only, only extend on the ground. Uh, I see. To, and that, as I said before, that, that dumps all the lift off of the wing and makes the wheels sit firmly on the ground and we can use maximum braking to stop the airplane oh, I see. up with the reverses if, if needs be. Okay, so that's actually deployed to, 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 to force the aircraft yes, down onto the exactly. ground. It gets it destroys all the lift off of the wing and it makes the weight of the airplane go onto the wheels and it firmly plants the wheels on the ground. That's when you see the gear literally collapsing on itself yeah. for the, and the hydraulic legs being used to yeah. their maximum. Because if there's still any lift on the wing, they, uh, the wheels might aquaplane or they might, yes. they might not be in full contact. Yes. And we wouldn't get the braking, and then our braking distance, our landing distance would be affected. And in the worst case, we'd overrun the runway. So, not yeah. only does it actually uh, reduce, uh, 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 negate the lift completely, but mm. it also forces the aircraft it does, onto yeah. the ground. Yeah, it does, it does. And you see the outer spoilers that, that are up there as well, they're, they're also uh, roll augmentation. So, in certain positions with the with the flap, they will extend to help the airplane roll. Yes. Uh, so the downgoing wing, the the, um, the spoilers will will extend to a, a varying degree depending on how much roll input is, is put in. Um, but you can see these. Uh, you can see them retracted. Can you, can you yeah, I'll do that right now. Okay. okay. It's worth looking at the back of these. Because you'll see there. Out. You'll see everything come out. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Well, let's uh, let's nip down to the back then, shall we? Once all the grainy flaps are out, the spoilers. There's not much left in the wing. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. It's crazy, isn't it? Okay, here we go. These uh, slats at the front of the in, in the inboard section are significantly different to the outboard. Yes, so I can see. It's uh, so almost seems at a different angle. Is that they are totally different? The they're almost literally at 90 degrees as well, isn't they, it? They're called Kruger flaps. These uh, these inboard ones are, are Kruger flaps, and these are uh, the outboard ones are just the standard slotted slats. So they have a you know work in a slightly different way. Uh, but um, still, lift augmentation. What's that? Uh, I've always wondered what that deflector is for, Steve. It's just a fence. It stops laminar flow. I see. So it stops the uh, um, uh, laminar flow of lift across, across the wing. I see. Right. I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's go out this way. You'll see um, the only bits left on the wing there. It is are crazy. The ailerons. So yes. So that's a, uh, an, our normal aileron. And our low speed aileron is uh, out on the. Uh, I see, okay. We really use our low speed because if to do anything other means you get lots of twisting on the wing. Uh, Just going to see if I can see this. See the screw being actu actuated. Yeah, you can see that there's still a little bit left, doesn't it? Yes. Between 30 and 40. Yes, so that's yes. The bit that you can see the clean part. Yes. <laughs> So some people call that the flapper on in the middle, do they, or is that uh, different air type types? Yeah. We'll yes. Okay. So uh, brakes down. So in, uh, Airbus call it the all speed aileron.
flaps five, and you can see at flaps two, rather, the inboard slats. Yes, in, they, start they, to they retract. Just, I see. And then numbers um, number one and number four slats. In fact, they're all coming in because it's gone all the way through uh, to the up position. But normally in the slats, in the flaps two position, these two slats will. Is that out. auto? Is that an auto yeah, effect? Yeah. I yeah. see. So as yeah. you move the, uh, the flap lever, the flaps move and the slats move together. Yes, yes. Uh, works all together like that. Fantastic. Good. Well, a bit of a bonus. <laughs> Steve, I think we're done. Good, thank you. Um, no, thank you. Um, obviously, uh, we will be back. Yes, please. As do. Arnie yeah. once said. Yeah. And uh, we will certainly be doing some... Uh, some flying with you guys. Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you. Yeah. We'll, we'll organise that as soon as possible. Yes. I'll just say goodbye to camera. Should be able to lock this out. You there, Jilly? Okay. Well, folks, I hope that was uh, uh, an interesting insight into the uh, Boeing 727. Now, I'm thinking I might, uh, just because of today's delays, I may try and do a, uh, a show with you guys tomorrow uh, at London Heathrow. If I can, we're going to have to see, what, uh, see, what, uh, see where we're at in terms of uh, our logistics for tomorrow. But um, I know you guys like to, uh, to watch your jets. And uh, let's just have a little look here. There we are, folks. Thanks, Steve, for coming and say goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, sir. No, no problem at all. I've been more than welcome. Well, it's been a wonderful insight. I'm sure that there are literally hundreds of, uh, of comments and questions and so on and so forth. Um, and we'll be obviously sharing this with you guys at 2XL as That'd well. Great, yeah. uh, thanks for tuning in, folks. We really appreciate it. And uh, all you elite members out there, this is exclusive to you guys as well and we're going to try and see if we can uh, get ourselves out there to London Heathrow or, uh, or bring you something tomorrow uh, for all you elite members. So take it easy, thanks a lot for tuning in and we'll see you soon. All the best, bye bye. Thank you. Mike. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you've got the other bit ready to play out, yeah? Uh-huh. Hey, how cool is that seeing those screws uh, working and the flaps all uh, activating? I love all that kind of stuff and I could stand there for ages and talk about it. So, you know, um, uh, the plan is, oh, is this working on here now? Uh, is that the one we've got on? Is that the one we've got on, Jilly? Is that the one we've got on? The microphone. That was Scritty Politi with the word. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, it's uh, um, Alan Partridge. Anyway, um, did that work? Did that work? Did that work? <laughs> okay, okay, we're just practicing things here. Um, but um, yes, so um, we're just we're going in a minute. Uh, but I thought we'd just play this one out because we did grab this one ready. Uh, to play out on another show, but before, well, give you something. It's only half past one. Uh, this is uh, BA747 Victor Kilo retirement from last year. Um, a little bit of nostalgia to play out for you folks. She's uh, taxiing out for a 27 right departure. Uh, and of course, um, a lot of people are going to be uh, reading and seeing lots of nostalgic things here. Uh, just a quick one from Neil M. Uh, just wanted to thank, let you know, Jer, uh, G, you and Jilly are doing an absolutely brilliant and, and very, in, uh, what, it, it, easy for you to say. It's very enjoyable and absolutely brilliant, blah, blah, blah. Not to mention the aviation info that you give us as the great English humour, uh, 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 as well as the uh, great English humour and, of course, the now becoming famous worldwide Jerry Rance. Some people don't like it. Some people, uh, I'm hearing, uh, who... Uh, 
really surprised me that they don't like it, to be honest with you. It's quite interesting, really, isn't it? It's only a bit of fun, folks. It's only a bit of fun. But true, you know, you need to... Oh. Uh, you need to be, you know, just, just, just rat, rat, sit back and relax a little bit, folks, and just let, 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 let everything just um, be cool, and don't, you don't have to sort of like, you know, uh, sort of like, I don't like it because it's this and it because it's that. It's like whatever. Uh, this uh, Neil says I'm originally from England, but now live in Ontario, Canada. I like, I, I like you. Love the Air Canada livery, the Bandit livery. It's a lot of hard work that you and Jilly are doing, but it's very much appreciated by thousands of viewers worldwide. Both of you stay safe and keep well um, with everything you do. Best wishes for, uh, from a Big Jet TV fan, Neil M. What's that, Jilly? Oh, has it now? Should we just be ready? Okay. Keep me posted on the, um, keep me posted on the, uh, uh, whip the mic out. Um, so that that's in a safe place. I can hear something. Right, this is the regular uh, Saturday service uh, of the ACT 747 operating for and on behalf of, I believe, um, uh, Turkish Airlines. Yeah, we did get it last week. I'm pretty sure we did. Now, the problem I've got here is obviously we've got... Uh, Okay, she's coming out. Oh, there she comes. Listen. Oh, listen to him. Yeah. She's eased back a little bit on the throttles there, but yeah, she's wow, she's high, she's high. Does it? Does it? Okay. Do that. Do that. Is that? Is, can you hear the zoom? Oh wow. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. 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 All right. Well. Um, anyway, folks. Uh, this is the um, uh, the final flight for uh, Victor Kilo from last year. Now, the question is, where was she going? I think she was going for scrap, to be honest with you folks. I think that 90% of all of uh, B uh, British Airways 747s went for scrap, apart from the uh, the three retro jets, which uh, after much public uh, uh, demand and, uh, uh, and, and uh, pleading with British Airways, uh, they ended up um, they ended up going to uh, new homes where they will be used for public exhibits, but also um, film shoots and stuff like that. I don't know if you've seen Top Gear, but there's that one that's uh, that I think it's an old 200 that's stuck at the side of the runway that they used for um, as film as a film set. Um, uh, one in particular, I think, was James Bond with the twin jets on it. Um, but hopefully, I don't think they're going to be doing anything so dramatic to these 747s. I think they're going to leave them exactly as they as they were when they arrived, um, and hopefully, looked after by a load of um, wonderful. Um, 
people who are always uh, uh, looking after these aeroplanes that you see at museums and stuff like that. These are all volunteers, 99% of them folks are volunteers who basically for their love of the aircraft uh, will continue to look after her. And that's what the guys do at Heathrow as well with, with, uh, with the uh, Concorde uh, that's at Heathrow. They're not employed by anybody, uh, they just come in on behalf of whoever it might be just to clean Concorde uh, at least once a year. She's weeping at the moment from her window. She is in need of a wash uh, and hopefully we can cover that one day wouldn't that be wonderful uh, being live airside at London Heathrow uh, but good luck with that uh, <laughs> um, so anyway this is Victor Kilo live from London Heathrow runway 27 right departure and final flight run VT GP Red engines uh, which is something that we took for granted uh, so many times on so many days with Big Jet TV um, hearing a cacophony of RB211s uh, gracing us probably five, six times every show minimum. Uh, so you will, as she turns, you may even hear her um, because the sound's obviously carrying towards us. So we might hear her, but we certainly will as she comes up towards us. So uh, I'm going to shut my gob now and uh, let these uh, RB211s do their stuff right the way through the entire um, sequence. Uh, while well, it goes past the sign, folks, don't worry.
to Farewell. Oh, girl. Here we go. Screaming. <laughs> uh, right, I'm just looking up sprays and stuff to get for the model, folks. Um, if you're ever going to do any spraying, any type of airbrushing um, on, a, on, a, on a model, on a, on, an, on a kit, on a model kit, or if you're going to do any kind of spray, we're using an airbrush or using the spray cans that Tamiya uh, make. Just um, make sure that you uh, do whatever you're doing in a very well ventilated place. I'm going to do the, any spraying outside here. 
uh, on the deck. Uh, so if you do get the opportunity, wait till it's a clear day, try and do it outside if you can. Use your dad's workbench or something like that. Um, and plan ahead as well. But we'll go through all of that when we when we get the model on, um, on, uh, on Monday. Um, but uh, that's it. We'll see you later, 7.30 sharp, folks, uh, for the quiz, Big Jet TV Aviation quiz tonight, 7.30. Uh, you can join in simply uh, by uh, downloading, what you do, Jelly, download the QR code. Um, okay, so we will have the, we will have the QR, QR code on the app, uh, on Twitter and on Facebook. What's that, Jelly? Okay, about an hour before. We'll have that up about, about an hour before, about six o'clock tonight. We'll have that with the instructions on how to, how to join. Uh, it'd be great to have you all there with us. It is always a great fun night, and uh, at least, especially at the moment, we all need a laugh, don't we? So see you back here uh, around about 7.30 tonight. Uh, quiz starts at eight o'clock sharp. So don't be late, because how many people do we get half an hour in? Ah, oh, I've only just joined. I didn't know it was happening. It's like... <laughs> Well, get the app, because if you get the app, then you'll know that it's happening, won't you? Because you'll get a little bing, or you look on your phone, you see a little red dot on the app going, oh, I've just had a notification. Oh, quiz tonight, 7.30, be, be there or be square. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so keep an eye on the app, folks. Um, and for those of people who are watching this um, later on, uh, sorry you couldn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, we'll see you tonight, 7.30 sharp. Take it easy. And that's 19.30 UK GMT. I think we are into now, aren't we? We're, into G We're still in GMT at the moment, yeah. Anyway, take it easy. I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, GP. Yeah.